Hi everyone, Bree here from Extractuario, and if you've been wondering what are the steps I need to take in order to become an actuary, well this is the video for you. Uh, because today I'm going to be going into the 8 steps that you need to do in order to become a fully qualified actuary of the Society of Actuaries or the Casualty Actuarial Society. Okay, so let's get right into it. Okay, the first step is to take some courses in calculus, algebra, time value of money, uh, statistics. Things like that are really going to help you do well on actuarial exams, which I'll talk about later. But in order to be an actuary, you actually don't need to have any kind of degree. You really just need to pass all the exams. But it is highly recommended that you get some sort of degree because that will really help you uh, be more employable later. I think you're really limiting your job opportunities if you don't get some sort of degree, but I just wanted to let you know that you don't actually have to have one. Now, you might be wondering whether you should get a degree in actuarial science specifically, or whether you should go with something more general. And my opinion is that you should get something that's more general. You don't want to narrow down your options just to actuarial science, um, because maybe later you'll decide that this isn't what you actually want to do and you'll want to have a degree that will allow you to do lots of other things. I'm not saying that you couldn't do other things with an actuarial science degree, but you're, you're really narrowing down the specialization that you get in school. So you may know that I actually have a degree in actuarial science, which if I was doing it over again, I'd probably do different, but it's done now. So I do think that the benefit of getting a degree in actuarial science was that I took courses that teach me that I took courses that taught me specifically about the things that would be on exams. So I had a, a lot of knowledge of on all the topics that were tested on the preliminary exams. So that was really helpful. But if I had decided not to be an actuary, I would have to search outside of actuarial careers and I don't know whether my degree would be recognized or anything like I'm not really sure how it would be perceived by other employers if I didn't decide to go the actuarial route. So that's just something to think about. Okay the number two thing that you need to do in order to become an actuary is pass some exams. So this step I'm just going to talk about passing your first one or two exams. Um, I'll link to a video up here, up here, I'm not sure where it will go, but that video will help you decide which exam you should write first. There are two options, there's exam P or FM. I wouldn't recommend going with anything other than those two as your first exam, although you can, you can write actuarial exams in any order, but you should, I recommend that you go with exam P or FM. So that video will explain to you how you should decide which one to write first. Uh, the fail, failure rates on these exams are very high, so you have to take time to prepare for them. Usually I recommend between three and four months. And pass rates are about 50%, a little less actually, which means that only, let's just say 50% of people pass each time. And that includes people that are writing it for their, for their first, second, third time. So it's people that have experience too, that are writing it and still the pass rates are below 50%. So that just gives you a sense of how difficult the exams are and you'll really want to prepare hard. Um, I do have a study strategy program if you're interested which helps you step by step on how to prepare for both exam P and FM, the first two exams. So you can check out that. I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, on to number three. Okay, this is something that you're actually going to do at the same time as you're doing step one and step two. And actually, I didn't mention it before, but you're actually going to be writing your first one or two exams while you're still in school, usually. That's what the path that most, pe most people take. But sometimes you decide after you're already done school that you want to write exams and be an actuary, and that's fine too. But for the most part, if you know you're going to be an actuary while you're still in school, you'll probably start writing exams while you're still in school. So all these steps aren't step one, step two, step three, and, and onward. They kind of all happen at the same time, or some, some of them happen at the same time as others, is, I guess is what I'm trying to say. 
So this number three is actually something that you'll be doing at the same time as you're in school, same time as you're writing your first exam, and it is to improve your computer skills. You'll want to have some programming experience and you'll want to know how to use Excel. So those are two really big factors that will come into play on your resume. It will be a huge benefit for you when employers are looking at your resume if they see that you've had experience with Excel and you know how to program in either Python or VBA or, or any language really, but I think VBA and Python are the two that you should aim for because they are used a lot in the industry no matter what company you're working at. So they're not specific to the job that you'd be doing. I think having knowledge of those two programming languages will really give you a good foundation and you, you'll be able to easily, more easily anyway, pick up uh, other languages if you know these ones. So I recommend that you get some experience in Excel. Make sure you know how to use it. Um, all the different functions, VLOOKUPs, HLOOKUPs, IF statements, everything like that, pivot tables, all that will be really good and it will help improve your resume. So that is step number three. Okay, step number four is to get an actuarial internship. It's not always possible to get an internship in actuarial science, but you can definitely get something that's in a related field. So anything in underwriting or pr pretty much anything in an insurance company, I would say is good. Data analysis, uh, risk management, investments even, anything along those lines will be really good experience for you to have in an actuarial position and they'll help improve your employability later. So if you get internship positions, sometimes it's really hard, but you have to be open to going to different locations because if you're trying to find a, a, an internship specifically in your very small geographical area, it might be hard. So you have to be open to traveling a bit and, and just be open to the opportunities because this is really going to help you improve your chances of being successful in the actuarial field. So not only does an actuarial internship help you to get experience for your resume, but it will also help you determine if you really like actuarial work and whether it's a good fit for you because you'll want to know that early. You don't want to spend too long uh, doing these exams and, and everything if you decide that the work actually isn't something that you enjoy. And it will help you get your foot in the door too. At Like if you have a job in an insurance company, that's a really great thing because you'll have a foot in the door there and if you do good work they'll be very likely to have you back full time if you like if you can prove that you're a good worker and you understand the work and everything I think there's a really good possibility of you being offered a job afterwards okay so number five is to write more exams a, a few steps to go in step number three I said for, write your first one to two exams because those ones are kind of separate from the rest in the sense that you probably want to write those before you get an internship, which was the next step. But after you've got your internship, you should try writing some more exams. To get a full-time job in the US, usually two to three exams is good enough. And well, that should be good enough. Otherwise, it's probably something other than exams that is holding you back. Um, if you're in Canada, four to five is more typical for an entry-level actuarial analyst. So depending on where you are will depend on how many exams you should get done. But at this point, you may also have to start deciding whether you want to go the SOA route or the CAS route. So SOA is the Society of Actuaries, and that deals more with life and health insurance whereas the CAS route is property insurance, so you'll be dealing with auto insurance and property insurance and things like that, house insurance. So at this point, once you get to a certain number of exams, you're going to have to decide which way you want to go, and that will be in this step probably. Okay, now step six. This is gonna be done kind of simultaneously with number five while you're writing exams. You're going to get an actuarial job. This is a really exciting time for you because it, everything that you've worked towards up until now is finally all coming together when you finally get your very first actuarial position. 
So when you're in this position, you're going to really want to understand as much as you possibly can. In my first position, I found that everything I learned in exams was, it was helpful, but I learned so much more about everything actuarial and everything insurance related. I learned so much more when I was actually on the job. So it's really important that you ask questions so that you're understanding your work. And another thing is that you're just going to want to make sure you're adding value. Always try to think of ways that you can improve processes and just make things better overall. And that will make you a really valuable member of the actuarial team. And of course, this is something that you can do when you're at your internship too. There's just not usually as much opportunity to do that kind of stuff, but definitely if you have suggestions, make them. I'm sure your manager will be really happy to see that you're trying to help and making suggestions and that will be great in your review. Okay, step number seven is finish your exams. You have to, there right now, there are eight actuarial exams, but they're making a bunch of changes and there are going to be more. So once you have your job, that's when you'll eventually finish your exams. And that usually takes quite a while. Um, your employer will probably pay for your study materials. They'll give you some study time. They'll pay for your exams and, and stuff. So it's really awesome if you have an employer that has a st uh, an actuarial student program. And that's when you'll get all those kind of benefits. Um, once you have passed all your exams, you'll have to start paying, well, you'll be either an FSA, a fellow of the Society of Actuaries, or you'll be an FCAS, which is a fellow of the Casualty Actuarial Society. So once you've obtained that, what you have to do is just pay annual fees to remain a member of those organizations, and you have to do some continuing education to just to keep up to date on industry standards and everything going on in the industry. So once you reach that point, it's no more exams finally. And yeah, so you just have to kind of keep up with the industry and how things are moving. And number eight is kind of occurring at the same time as you're finishing off those exams. You're kind of moving up the ranks in your company. So you're getting higher and higher level positions, management positions, where you'll have a team under you, hopefully. So in some smaller companies, you might actually have to be fully qualified in order to even have a management positions. But there are other companies, usually the bigger companies, they have position management positions for people that still aren't done all their exams. So that would be really nice to get that um, management experience. But it, I wouldn't make any major decisions on what kind of jobs you accept just based on that. Just know that as you keep writing exams and when you reach this final stage, stage number eight, you're going to be moving up. You're going to have more responsibilities. You're going to have a team reporting to you. So that's the last stage, the last step in this process of becoming an actuary. And from there, you just kind of keep going, keep on improving, keep on gaining more and more responsibility. So yeah, those are the eight steps to become an actuary. I hope they help. So if you have any questions, you can leave a question in the comments below and I will definitely get back to you and answer those. And if you didn't know, I actually have study tips that I send out to people through email about one, uh, two or three per week. If you're studying for exam P or FM, definitely check those out. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can sign up to get those study tips. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye.